coming up next on Button to Christ Ministries. Jesus said in, I think it's uh, Luke 10, verse 9 or somewhere there, where it says, I've seen Satan fall from heaven like lightning, but behold, I've given you power over him to trample him. So therefore, my estimation from looking at it is that Satan have access to heaven before Christ. But when Christ came, he won the victory. He defeated Satan and Satan had no more access. And so when we surrender to Christ even now, Christ have dominion within our lives and we have dominion over Satan. Stay tuned. Praise yes, the Lord. Yes, Indeed, yes. God is good. Isn't Praise he easy? God. Awesome. Yes. I know I have a little bit of <clears throat> cold and a change of weather, but you know, regardless, still we must press. We must continue. God Amen. has been truly amazing. He has been truly awesome. We thank you, the viewers, for sending in the questions as we, you know, week by week, as your question comes in, we try our best indeed to press together. So, my friend. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise God. Praise ye the Lord. Um, this question is based upon an actual scripture found in, uh, in, Job, six, in Job chapter 1, actually, <laughs> verses 6 and 7. And it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro from the earth and from walking up and down in it. The question is, how did Satan get back in heaven if he was cast out? Well, there's a lot of question that you could ask concerning that question. Because first of all, who said they were in heaven? <laughs> I know you read the scripture. Mm -hmm. Who is the sons of God? Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually do a sermon on that. Who is the sons of God? Because it's actually righteous people. It wasn't angel. So that disqualified everything right away. So it wasn't in heaven. You see, God have dominion and power and authority. He can be everywhere at the same time. And because there's a warfare, there's a controversy that is going on daily over our soul. So the reasoning go back and forth. But I want to tell you that it's not scriptural, but based on when you have read, um, the controversy and the war, when there was war in heaven, mm -hmm. Satan was cast out with all his angels. So they were down here. But the war was against Jesus Christ. And Jesus said in, I think it's uh, Luke 10, verse 9 or somewhere there, where it says, I've seen Satan fall from heaven like lightning. But behold, I've given you power over him to trample him. So therefore, my estimation from looking at it is that Satan have access to heaven before Christ. But when Christ came, he won the victory. He defeated Satan, and Satan had no more access. Mm -hmm. And so when we surrender to Christ even now, Christ have dominion within our lives, and we have dominion over Satan. But if you read the question carefully, I've never heard with like the scripture, if you read it, is when the sons of men present themselves before God, mm -hmm. the, uh, the sons of God. Yeah, the sons of God. And the sons of God are Christ's people. So they weren't in heaven. So that's something that you got to take back to the drawing board. I don't know who sent that question in, but 
Mercy. Indeed, we have to dig a bit deeper and Mercy. get more in the scripture. And it's good when we can, you know, find that basis of where the scriptures is and, and listen to the Holy Spirit as we read the scripture. You know, Amen. definitely taking it at face value, but definitely need to dig a bit deeper Amen. into the word and to find out indeed sons of God. As you said, you might present a word on that based upon how the Lord leads. Um, our next question tonight is someone I know having control. Sorry. <clears throat> someone I know having continued pain all over their body and the doctors can't figure it out or they can't find what's wrong. Is this witchcraft? Well, you see, when we go to pray for people, we got to rule out because there are sicknesses, but the devil also causes sicknesses. You know what I mean? He have power to do that too. So if you're going to the doctor and they're doing all the tests, there are certain things that we'll do. We'll pray with the person, We'll open the scriptures and we'll see. It's kind of hard if you are not really connected to God. It's hard if I'm feeling pain, but I'm not 100% connected to God. It's hard to tell if it's witchcraft or if I'm demon possessed. Mm -hmm. But there are certain signs, and I know I've mentioned it in some sermons, how to know if you're demon possessed. Because if you're feeling pain and it's a spiritual thing, more likely you're going to be getting temperature changes. You're going to be feeling heat, like fever, mm -hmm. a lot of times associated to demon possession. And also you will have chills and all these things happening to you. But the right way is to go into the Word if you want to find out, especially Matthew 27, mm -hmm. that's powerful, <laughs> Revelation 20, and also Revelation 12, especially verse 11, we overcame them by the blood of the Lamb, mm -hmm. and also Psalms 3. If you kept reading those in deep worship, you will know if it's a spiritual warfare, definitely. Mercy. I, I know those scriptures are very powerful and based Amen. upon on seeing you know, things that are happening right before your eyes and getting, as you said, more into deep worship and deeper and deeper and not just reading the word but reading it and really let, let it echoes within your soul. Let it echoes as you read. You're actually listening to the word as you read it. And instead of just reading through it for reading sake, just to check or just to see, but actually get into the mode of worship and digging deeper in the word. Um, next question is, I, I am having dreams about being intimate with people I know and also random people, what does this mean? Well, <clears throat> clearly it's a sexual spirit and it's an open door. There's two ways. The enemy tries to attack your thought. Your mind is under attack. And he's finding a way in. If you are having these dreams, you need to pray about it. You need to rebuke because it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual situation. So... Because um, based on the question you asked then, you are having these encounters and you know it's not of God. It's, God don't ordain that this happened to his people. And once it happened to you, it's going to bring your mind to stray and your thought, you're going to get confused, you're concerned, different thought going to come in, temptation. It's a door. So therefore, you got to check what you're watching, the materials you have in your home. You know, are you watching pornography? Because sometimes people will say these things, but they don't tell the doors. I know I work with a lot of different cases where um, the person is an Adventist, and they are dating somebody who is not even Adventist, and they are, they are being intimate. But still you expect the full protection of God. You know, all the doors are open, sexual doors, so... You know, all the spirit from that person is going to intertwine and cross over. So it's very complex there. Once, you know. <laughs> Mercy. And talking about intertwining and crossing over as well and the spirit um, coming into you, we have a viewer that asks the question, I know that I have spirits in me. Can I deliver myself 
through prayer and fasting? Well, it depends on the, on the level. Because, you see, a lot of people are secretive. They don't want to tell people what they're going through. And I think that's one of the main reasons why people are not being delivered. You don't want to be open because there's a guilt, there's a shame that is holding you captive. And that's what the devil is about, secrecy. And he wants you to keep it. So if you think that you are demon-possessed, first of all, you got to know to what level. Because there's some level that we dealt with where you're going to be thrown. I remember I came here and I did a program where I shared a testimony about a woman in the UK. I was praying with her on the phone. And the Spirit picked her up three times and threw her. I, could hear, I heard when she, fell, when she dropped on the floor. But she held on to the phone. But not in all cases you're going to be able to be prayed for and able to hold on to the phone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I praise God because sometimes when we go into different homes, it's almost impossible. That person could never hold on to a phone. But they are in a crisis where they are far away. I remember when we pray for um, our dear brother who testified, Brother um, Royce, who testified not too long ago over there in Australia. When we prayed with him first, some heavy manifestation, the devil pinned him down on the ground and he was bent up and he couldn't stand up on all different things. But God had an angel there with him so that the devil did not take away the phone and throw it away. You know what I mean? God is a powerful God. So we've seen a lot of situation. So if you're going to do that, you have to go into a lot of fasting and prayer, and it depends on the level. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you if you are, because possession is at different level. If you go to a psychic and you are a Seventh-day Adventist, you already open a big door. When those demons come in you, you may be going around normal and think everything is okay. But there are spirits in you. Because you opened the door, you went to a psychic that the Lord speaks about, that we should not have any communication with the dead or, or the psychic and the evil people. So once you open that door, spirit enters into you, whether you know it or not. So therefore, it's harder for you to deliver yourself because the spirit, you invite them in. But if somebody send witchcraft at you, you can wrestle and you can pray. It would be much easier. But if you eat something from somebody and there's witchcraft that is dosed up in it, again, it's a little bit harder. It goes in your stomach. It's a high level stuff. Yeah, and, and based upon what you're saying in, in different, different situations, different, different circumstances, I know in Deuteronomy chapter 18 talk about, you know, that we are not to, you know, go to the witches, to the warlocks to the necromancers, and it gives you an entire list, you know what I mean? And the Lord even said, this is the reason why I'm actually driving out these people out the land. I'm vomiting them out the land according to what the word says in Deuteronomy chapter 18. So we know, as he said, it's a, it's a different kind of door when yeah. you actually go and open the door or if somebody is actually sending it at right. you. So we thank you for... These cases we have done where... The demon will say, they are the one let us in. So they are not leaving. They, they let us in willingly. Mm -hmm. Mercy. And, and talking about, you know, uh, uh, um, these people from the occult, um, how do people in the occult infiltrate the local churches when the name of Jesus is being claimed? Does the scripture, there's a scripture that says in Philippians 2 verses 10 to 11, that the name of Jesus, sorry, that the name of Jesus, every knee shall, should bow. And the tongue confess. And should bow of things in heaven and on the earth and in the earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So how are these people are being able to infiltrate from, from, from your experience, the local you see churches? The, you see, the church, if the church is sanctified and people are really higher, 
But the devil already planted his seed and have his agent all over. So the church is already polluted. It's not sacred and true worship. And if you just take a look at how the churches operate, a lot of people are in churches, but they are involved in all different things. I, I remember I share a testimony about, I talked to a pastor, a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, who is from one of the islands. And he told me that he went to pray for a young lady. And when he went to pray for the young lady who was possessed, the demon said to him, we control most of the people in your church. And when we are ready, we're going to gather them in. And he started to name their sins. He had to say, stop. And some of them he said he knew about. So the point is that the wheat and tear is going to grow together until the day of har harvest. But Satan have power, and he's infiltrating the church because we are letting them in, because we are compromising. We don't have powerful people of prayer again. When you have prayer meeting on a Wednesday night, how many people are there? Out of a church of 400, you're lucky if you have 15 people coming to prayer meeting, which prayer is one of the most powerful tools that opens and unlock power and people fail to come to prayer meetings because we're thinking we're busy, we're doing everything else because the devil is working overtime to keep God's people from the most powerful things in fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. So they have access. They can go in and out the church. Because the type of music we play, what we do within the church, the church is not sacred. It's not like back then. I know if we start to do some powerful worship here and the enemy walks in, we're going to know. If one of his agents comes in, we're going to know. The Lord will show you. But if the church is not in worship, forget it. Okay, I know you just finished the series on Nehemiah. Yeah. So, and, and, and when you, you want to talk a little bit about the last chapter of Nehemiah when, you know, the, the, the man of God that he's supposed to be letting the enemy and he take possession. Could, could you kind of, could you kind of like, you know, you see, you see, in it? Nehemiah, it was a stage from being in captivity. Mm -hmm. The Lord released them. They coming back, building the, the, the sanctuary, the altar of God, building the wall and then occupying the whole gated community. And then afterwards, Tobiah is like Satan. He's always knocking. He don't give up on God's people. He's always looking for a way in. Tobias was the man who tried to stop Nehemiah and says, come down from the wall. We're going to talk. We, we want to have a meeting. And Nehemiah said, I can't come down. I'm doing the Lord's work. I can't stop. I'm doing a great work for the Lord. The point is that that same man infiltrate the leader. And the leader move out the things in the, in, in the vestry or the, the room beside the altar and put in Tobiah, who was all like Satan. And that represent the devil, how the devil have a room in even God's church. And he moved him in there. And it took a leader like Nehemiah that God sent back with the discerning power to throw him out. Mm -hmm. It says then that God have his people. Amidst the devil is trying to infiltrate God's church, God still have his people like Nehemiah who is ready to wake up and to call sin by its name. Amen. How, how then can you encourage us to... to you know, be a little bit more like, not even be a little bit more, but stand up as Nehemiah because a lot of us who are in the churches know of the wrongdoings, know of the people who are also doing the wrongdoings, but yet still we keep everything on our hush and just say, you know, someone else will deal with it. How would you then encourage? No, because you know what? Um, you can't give what you don't have. That's one of my favorite. You can't give what you don't have. So if the whole church is sick, you know, who's going to come forth unless we stay in the word? So it's hard, brethren, 
Because we can call sin. If you notice when we go to pray for people, mm -hmm. some people are afraid to come because the devil will call your sin out. He will say, hey, where were you going? You were just up there last week stealing. Where are you going? You can't cast me out. So people are afraid because of the secret sin. If you are willing and say, you know what, Satan, I have confessed my sin to the Lord, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I'm coming, and it's not my power. Because many times the devil will say to me, you don't have power to get mm -hmm. us out. And I said, you're right. I don't have power, but I know who have the power. Amen. I'm connected to the power. Mm -hmm. And then he started to tremble. <laughs> you know what I mean? So God is also. I give God praise because of, of, of your experience. And, you know, a lot of the young people as well who comes out on these missions, the experience that they gain as well. And, you know, it just keep going wider and wider. And, you know, we heard a brother there in Australia who has gone through his, you know what I mean? And now the Lord is just giving him a church. And he yeah. said he's going to go in the community and basically wake up the community where the church is. So could you listen, imagine? Listen, listen, listen. We want Brother Rice to come to Toronto. So we anoint him. And we're going back there to Australia to worship in that church. We're going to come and do a crusade. Uh, evangelistic series there. Amen. Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Brother Rice, I know he's listening. This is the man who said one day he woke up and he's in the ceiling, levitate. He's coming from the occult. You know, it's powerful things happening. But remember, when Paul was converted, mm -hmm. he became powerful for Christ. When you know the other side, you don't take God for granted. A lot of people don't respect God. We're just in the church fooling around and don't respect God. Mercy. Mercy. And talking about fooling around, I know time is far spent. Um, this question is related to another scripture. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but warmongers and adulterers God will judge. The question is, what does the Bible mean when it says the marriage bed is undefiled? Well, a marriage is sacred. Mm -hmm. And it's a union, it's a covenant. And because it talks about whoremongers, it's talking about sexual sin. Mm -hmm. That when you commit your life to your partner and you submit, you're supposed to live sanctified lives. And that bed represents your sexual relationship, your relationship, it represents the covenant. So therefore, if that covenant is broken, then it's, your bed now is defiled. And if it's defiled, it's an open door for pornography, for uh, attacks, uh, poverty. Everything is open up. Mercy. And talking about poverty and the open doors, um, I know by opening certain doors, especially when it comes to sexuality. I know a lot of men are addicted, especially a lot of young men that I meet and talk with as well. Some of them are willing to share, some are not. A lot of them are addicted to pornography. And for most of them, you know, it, it is a means of pleasuring. So they would use, you know, some kind of term to me like say, well, at least I'm not going out there to have you know what I mean, sexual relations with other women or so forth, so on. Um, so in regards to that, how would you now address, you know what I mean, like a lot of young people, brother, you know, like a lot. Well, sin is sin. Mm -hmm. So if you dress it up, you put it up, no matter what, sin will not enter. And as a matter of fact, tonight the topic is about salvation. You know, that it's a gift. You know, God comes to save and to rescue. And if you are struggling with pornography, and especially masturbation, they are heavy amongst God's people, heavy. And once that dominates you, there's a sexual spirit that will take you over, that Satan assigned to you. And you know what? In a little while, the enemy, Satan or his agent, will actually be intimate with you. I've worked on hundreds of cases where people are having intimacy with unseen being and they don't know how it starts. It's because of the open door of pornography and masturbation because itself 
it goes back to self. This is what I want, to satisfy self. So we got to surrender to Christ. Only him can come in and destroy that strong man and set us free. Praise the Lord. Brother, we thank you so much for Praise your God. experience, your words of encouragement. Amen. And to those who are watching, we Amen. ask that you continue to send your questions in, you know, via email, via text messages, wherever you know, you know, whatever question you would like us to address or situation that is happening in your life. Just continue to send your questions as we continue to press together. Because truly, indeed, our God is amazing and he's willing to deliver. What would it take to be free? God be praised. Thanks for watching this program. We hope that you were blessed. To further your support with us, please consider giving a donation at buttontochrist.com or .org. Any amount is appreciated and will be used for the continued growth of our ministry and the spreading of the gospel to the world. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time.